Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Early Thursday, Russia fired 30 cruise missiles against different areas of Ukraine. According to officials, the country's air defenses were able to shoot down 29 out of the 30 missiles fired. The missile that did make it through managed to kill one person and injure two others, and struck an industrial building in southern Odessa. Earlier this week, Russian forces also fired six hypersonic missiles that the Ukrainian military was able to destroy in a single night. A social media post from the general staff of Ukraine's armed forces said Russia launched 18 missile strikes around 3.30 a.m., six of which were the Kinzhal hypersonic missiles. The social media post read, quote, all 18 missiles were destroyed by the forces and means of air defense of the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, end quote. No casualties were reported in Tuesday's incident. An Idaho grand jury has indicted Brian Koberger, the man suspected of killing four Idaho college students in November. Koberger was arrested in December on four counts of first-degree murder and burglary and was accused of breaking into the apartment house with the intent to commit a felony. The indictment returned to Leta County against Koberger says he did unlawfully enter the home and then willfully, unlawfully, deliberately with premeditation to kill and murder his four victims. During the indictment, a district judge ruled in favor of the state's request to seal the names of witnesses who testified before the grand jury as they could be subject to harassment or intimidation. The grand jury indictment did not release any additional details in the case. According to the World Meteorological Organization, the world is now likely to breach a key climate threshold for the first time within the next five years. Global temperatures have soared in recent years as the world continues to burn planet-warming fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, a trend that shows no sign of slowing. The WML reported that between 2023 and two. 2027, there is a 66% chance that the planet's temperature will rise 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming above pre-industrial levels for at least one year. Scientists considered 1.5 degrees of warming as a key tipping point beyond which the chances of extreme flooding, drought, wildfires, and food shortages could increase dramatically. Scientists say that while the window to act is closing fast, there is still time to reduce global warming by moving away from burning oil, coal, and gas, and toward clean energy. According to the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the COVID-19 vaccine from Johnson & Johnson is no longer available in the states. The CDC has directed providers to dispose of any that they had left over as all remaining doses expired last week. Last year, the CDC limited the emergency use authorization of the vaccine to adults who could potentially be at risk of a rare and dangerous clotting condition after injection. More than 31.5 million doses have been delivered to states and other jurisdictions, leaving about 12.5 million doses unused. Only about 7% of vaccinated people in the U.S. got the first J&J &J vaccine. With the end of the federal COVID-19 public health emergency, Mass notified the official COVID-19 exposure notification system for Massachusetts was discontinued on Thursday. Between June 2021 and May 2023, approximately 3.2 million smartphone users chose to activate Mass Notify on their devices with the goal of reducing risk and slowing the spread in their communities. With the announcement of Mass Notify's discontinuation, officials reiterated that high levels of vaccination, widespread population immunity, and available treatments have significantly reduced the risk of severe COVID-19 disease, hospitalization, and death, but encourage community members to continue following the Massachusetts Department of Public Health COVID-19 guidance. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. COVID-19 boosters are an important tool to keep you healthy. You may still get COVID after getting a booster, but it helps reduce your risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Learn more at mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. 
Welcome back. The Braintree Police Department held a swearing-in ceremony over the weekend to welcome its newest officers to the force. Four new officers were sworn in, Patricia Convoy, Christopher Kokoris, Mitchell Nevins, and Patrick Ronka. Together, they graduated from the Massachusetts Municipal Police Training Committee's Randolph Academy on Thursday after completing a 20-week program and were sworn in at the town hall ceremony on Friday morning. They will now undergo 12 weeks of field training with an assigned field training officer. Merrick Kokoris said he is, quote, extremely proud of our four officers and their hard work in completing the academy, end quote. Haley Leahy of South Weymouth says a treasured bench bought, bought to honor the memory of her late father has gone missing at the Braintree Cemetery. Haley lost her father, John, last November, and in the weeks following her father's death, Leahy had a bench made to honor him. Placing it near her father's headstone at the Braintree Cemetery, the bench had been inscribed with the message, Until We Meet Again, and featured a picture of a daughter holding a father's hand. Haley is on a mission to get back a bench that offers her more than just a place to sit. She said, quote, This whole thing is just very devastating. I was very close with him. He was an amazing man. He was always looking to help someone. End quote. If anyone has information about the stolen bench, you are asked to call the Braintree Police Department at 781-794-8600. Wave Seafood, a seafood market that will sell takeout food, has been approved to take over the former Curry Ace hardware store in Quin on Quincy Avenue. Owner Ray Kelly, a Braintree resident who has spent two decades in the wholesale fish business, has been working for two years to make the market a reality. Braintree's license board approved a restaurant license for Wave Seafood, which will be at 190 Quincy Ave. Kelly plans on renovating the building and for the market to have outdoor seating. He hopes to be open for business in mid-June. Braintree's Spring Yard Waste curbside collections will continue through the weeks of May 22nd and 29th. Acceptable items are grass, leaves, and twigs. The compost site will be open Wednesday through Sunday for larger items from 7.15 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. $35 earth machine compost bins are available to Braintree residents. Bins can be purchased at the Treasurer's Office at Town Hall on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. or on Tuesdays from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Fridays 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Bins will be delivered by Recycling Office staff after payment. For more information, you can visit the Town Hall website at braintreema.gov. The town of Braintree will be holding a Braintree Pride Festival on Sunday, June 4th at Watson Park. Braintree Pride aims to elevate inclusivity, equity, and awareness in order to celebrate the thriving LGBTQIA community. The event will include a bounce house, fire trucks to explore, face painting and music, as well as a food truck, ice cream truck, other vendors, and more. The festival on June 4th from noon to 4 p.m. is free to attend and family friendly. For more information, you can visit BraintreePride.com. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Take steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA-approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light-colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. Following a months-long investigation by the Justice Department's Inspector General, Massachusetts U.S. Attorney Rachel Rollins is resigning. Rollins has been the subject of an ethics investigation by the current DOJ Inspector General due to her appearance at a Democratic political fundraiser featuring First Lady Jill Biden last year. Rollins said she has been profoundly honored to have served as U.S. Attorney and proud of her office's work, but understands that her presence has become a distraction. 
The Inspector General's office released a report that outlines the allegations and says Rollins lied during an interview about information she gave to a reporter. A separate report from the Office of Special Counsel said that Rollins violated the Hatch Act, the federal law that stops the federal government from affecting elections or going about its activities in a partisan manner. The Justice Department has not released a comment. CVS Pharmacy will pay $6.15 million to settle allegations that the company overcharged patients for some prescriptions tied to workers' compensation insurance in four Massachusetts cities. The alleged overcharges occurred in Boston, Springfield, Worcester, and New Bedford. The settlement was announced Monday by the Office of State Attorney General Andrea Campbell, who says that, quote, ensuring that pharmacies follow procedures and do not drive up costs in our workers' compensation system is an important priority for my office, end quote. In a prepared statement, CVS said, quote, The agreement is not an admission of liability or wrongdoing, and we remain committed to complying with all laws and regulations applicable to our business, end quote. On April 24th, voters in Hingham approved a ban on the commercial sale or distribution of single-use plastic water bottles under a gallon. No single-use plastic water bottles will be sold or distributed in Hingham schools or any public buildings. The commercial ban starts January 1, 2024. Tina Sherwood, a member of the advisory committee that voted to support the ban, said the bottles have become a climate and pollution crisis and the statistics are staggering, as single-use plastic is being created more than ever before. Sherwood says the January 1st date will give local merchants time to sell their existing stock and to switch to recyclable alternatives. Hingham joins 24 of the 351 communities in Massachusetts that have already taken action against single-use plastic water bottles. The Quincy-based supermarket chain shop chain Stop and Shop says it will eliminate all single-use plastic bags from its stores by July and will charge customers 10 cents for each paper bag. Many Stop and Shop stores are already using only paper bags because of local ordinances, but Stop and Shop locations also offer reusable bags for sale. In a statement, a Hannaford representative said that the chain, quote, has an ambition to eliminate single-use bags in all our Massachusetts stores in the near future." End quote. Some events are coming up in Quincy as a flag raising ceremony and festival will open Pride Month in the city this year. The United First Parish Church in Quincy Center will hold a flag raising ceremony at 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 1st. Special Events Coordinator for the city, John McDonald, said the flag raising ceremony was received warm warmly last year and the committee has worked with local companies to hang the flag. Then on Sunday, June 4th, the 6th annual Q Pride Day Festival will be held from noon until 5 p.m. in Kilroy Square. The festival will include food trucks, games for kids, vendors, and performances from special guests like drag performer Randy Roberts. For more information, visit QuincyPride.com. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Did you know your teenager's brain is more likely to get addicted to nicotine than yours? The tobacco and vaping industries do. They target teens with their products and try to cover up the fact that there's nicotine in them. Talk with your kids about the real dangers of vaping. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have a few movie recommendations for you to watch. First up in entertainment comes Barbie. The highly anticipated movie directed by Greta Gerwig follows the story of Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, after she was expelled from Barbie land for being less than perfect. Barbie and Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, set off for the human world in an effort to find true happiness. Barbie is set to be released to theaters on July 21st. Next up in entertainment, Peter Pan and Wendy follows Wendy Darling, a young girl looking to avoid boarding school when she meets Peter Pan, a boy who refuses to grow up. Wendy, her brothers, and Tinkerbell follow Peter Pan to the magical world of Neverland, where they encounter an evil pirate captain. The film was directed by David Lowry. You can watch Peter Pan and Wendy now on Disney+. 
Finally in entertainment, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 focuses on Peter Quill who must rally his team to defend the universe and protect one of their own. If the mission is unsuccessful, it could possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. The film was just released and already is a box office hit bringing in $283 million globally. You can watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 now only in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.